DaVinci Resolve 18 is here and it's gonna save humanity. It's not, but it's got some very cool new features like the depth map that we can use to take the very sharp, very clean footage out of a GoPro and give it a more expensive feel by giving it some depth of field or rather taking it away and shallowing out that depth of field. Let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, here we are in DaVinci Resolve 18 public beta. This is the studio version. I do believe this function is currently available in the free version, but I do have the studio version. This footage here was actually captured on a GoPro 7, so not quite as crispy as a Hero 10, but we are going to apply the function anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to the point in my clip that I want to use as my benchmark. And now I'm going to go over to the color tab, make sure that clip is selected. And then we can scroll down to or search for the depth map, drag it and drop it over here. And you're also gonna need a serial node for this so you can do alt s or right click and add a serial node or a corrector node i'm going to do alt s and i am now going to connect the blue output to the blue input on the serial node and now let's get to going on the depth map i am going to switch it over to faster better <laughs> funny enough is better <laughs> it, it's a better map but it is far more intensive and even with an overclocked 5900X and RTX 3090, this is still clunky and heavy. It's heavy, but it works really well. So I do all of my stuff on faster and then whenever I go to export, I'll flip it to better and then do my export. We have depth map preview checked because I want to see what is getting affected in white and what is not in black and all the gradients of gray in between are the level of effectiveness, so gray is gonna be a partial effectiveness. I'm actually gonna invert this because I want the outfield uh, right here. I want sort of my blur to take over all of this and ease up towards the nose of the car. Now I am going to click Adjust Map Levels, and this is where you get to pick how far forward or backward or the other way around if it's you know standard and not inverted but we're doing inverted so I want my near limit to be well past and to go back and forth on what I, me showing the depth map preview without me having to click that box I'm just pressing control D all that does is disable or enable a certain node so this way I can swap back and forth and see what is and is not being affected without having to click a checkbox. So I want my near limit to be way out past that hood. So we're right up against the hood. So we're probably gonna go somewhere around probably 0.1. Okay, that starts way out here and then it graduates to about right. Uh, it's still not quite in enough. So I'm gonna bring in my far limit, 0.065. Let's try that. All right, that looks like that's gonna take in all of the the uh, stadium. This is, by the way, this is uh, me driving a Dodge Challenger Hellcat Superstock, 807 horsepower. It's got the red eye power. It's got the wide body kit, 315 wide semi slicks on it. I'm getting just hot and sweaty thinking about it. Uh, and also, I captured this audio on track, under hood, and then exhaust. I mixed them and you'll get to hear the glorious sounds at the very end. I'll play the whole track run at the end of this video, but for now, let's focus on the depth map. So that looks like it's gonna be nice and clean. And now, to get that to be affected, we need to make sure that the node is enabled. Don't accidentally leave it disabled and grayed out. And then come over here, and where it says depth map preview, cut that off. And now we are going to draw a blur because I want to, I'm gonna do a lens blur, drag it and put it onto the serial node after the depth map because I want to fake, okay? I'm gonna fake a shallower depth of field. And I am going to go ahead and do real apertures on an octagon aperture. And I'm gonna have my blur size just stupid, like 
four because I want to see where that effect is hitting. So for instance, on this left side, uh, it's kind of missing and it's overlapping too much on the right, but I think, yes, that's going to be pretty much fixed whenever I switch to better. So we'll leave it the way it is. And I, if I press play, it's going to be jumpy, jittery, and you see it skipping back and forth. Again, it's on faster, not better. Better is going to tidy this up a lot, and we have way too much. We're just trying to get a look at how it's going to look. So that's a little too close because I want this to take over the entire clip. So I'm actually going to enable depth map preview again, and I'm going to push this back just a little bit. Let's do 0.05 instead of that 0.6 like we had done. And that's probably going to clean it up. Yeah, that fades it a lot better. That's more of a fade. Now, this is way too much blur. So I'm going to go, I would either go 2 or even then that still looks kind of iPhone fake-ish. So I'm going to go something like 1.5 or one and a quarter. I think that looks really, really good. It's just enough shallowness to draw your eye to where you want. Because we want them looking right here. We want them looking at the track. We don't want them looking back here at the Coca-Cola signs. And I actually don't want them looking at all this dash. So I'm going to also add another node that is not the depth map that will blur out this. We're just going to do it with a standard window. Okay. So I'm going to add a node. I'm going to add a parallel mixer. Now all this stuff we've already done, we're going to leave it as is. I'm going to take this finished one. So this line is finished. This, this node tree from here to here with my depth map, and this is my actual blur, is done. I'm going to add it to that parallel corrector. And then dry, and now we're right here. This one's finished. Bring it to the end point. Okay? Now I'm going to add another add node, a corrector node. Okay? And we're going to grab the original footage from this green to the intake green of the new corrector node and add it to the the parallel. Now all we're going to do here is we're going to grab a circle and now we're just going to put it over the hood right here, make it fade out a little bit, bring it up here because I don't want it to look, you know, obviously fake or stupid. Now that that selection is done, we can add our lens blur. We're going to leave it at the octagon because I like that shape because I, that replicates the type of lenses that I actually use. And I'm going to leave it at four again so that we can come in here and we can mess with our power window and sort of fade it in and out. And guys, if you lose the edges, just use your scroll wheel and zoom out you're not, it's not lost forever you don't need to restart yeah that's looking pretty good that's just way too much blur so let's bring it back down to a, a one five that gives us a little bit of blur that's probably still not enough give it a two that blurs us out a little more so this right here is blurred a little bit that out there is blurred a little bit the hood gets nice and sharp right there at the nose all of the track for about a hundred foot in front of the nose of the car is nice and sharp and if we skip through this look at this is a shot that really stands out to me because the depth map is easily able to discern that this is in the distance and this is not so all the way up to the the fence line right here once it hits around right here it starts blurring it out it's just it's like magic it's so good and it's only gonna get better so now what I would do is I would go to my depth map switch this over to better, and then run over here and export it out. Well guys, as you see, it's not a perfect tool, but it is very powerful. And it is the new function inside of a beta program. And I'm still not getting crashing. It's, it's pretty system intensive, but that's okay. It's brand new and it's very powerful. It's gonna save me hours in the editing room. If you guys like videos like this, please subscribe to stay on top of all my stuff and leave me a comment down below if you've decided to jump for the public beta or if you're going to stay back on Resolve 17 where it's nice and safe. Whoa.